The distressing story of a dictator who steals treasure, who claims to have located some of the wealth that was lost during World War II in the Philippines, only to have it taken away by the avaricious dictator Ferdinand Marcos of the Philippines at the time. Marcos and his men carried out a house invasion on the hunter, during which they made off with gold bars, a Buddha statue made of pure gold, and even the hunter's children's piggy bank. After being beaten and tormented, the treasure hunter continued to refuse to reveal the location of the hidden wealth. Imelda eventually revealed that a large percentage of Marcos's fortune came from Yamashita's gold after the couple escaped to Hawaii in 1986. Marcos and his wife Imelda fled to Hawaii at the same time, and this was just the beginning of the problem for this dictator who steals treasure. In a following legal battle, the estate of the treasure hunter and the investors were granted $22 billion, which confirmed that Marcos was definitely responsible for stealing the treasure. Treasure hunters continue to put their lives in danger in the modern era in the hope of finding any of the elusive remaining lost gold from World War II. However, when he returned to the Philippines with the treasure in his possession, the avaricious tyrant Ferdinand Marcos stole it from him. The residence of the treasure seeker was broken into by Marcos and his men, who made off with gold bars, a statue of Buddha made of pure gold, and even the treasure hunter's children's piggy banks. Later on, the treasure seeker was beaten and tortured, but he continued to refuse to give the whereabouts of the remaining riches. Imelda Marcos, who was married to Ferdinand Marcos, and Marcos both escaped to Hawaii in 1986. Years later, Imelda revealed that a significant portion of Marcos's riches was built on Yamashita's gold. In the subsequent court struggle, a jury decided that Marcos had in fact stolen the treasure and awarded the treasure hunter's estate and his investors a total of $22 billion. Treasure hunters continue to put their lives in danger every day in the hope of finding any remaining gold looted during World War II. During World War II, Yamashita is said to have stolen gold, diamonds, and historical artifacts from 12 different countries located in East and Southeast Asia. He then supposedly buried these valuables in a number of secret places throughout the Philippines. But Yamashita never got the opportunity to collect his loot because in 1946, the Americans found him guilty of war crimes and sentenced him to death by hanging. A locksmith named Rogelio Rojas made the discovery in 1971 of one of Yamashita's hidden hoards. The hoard contained nearly a ton of gold in the form of gold bars as well as a Buddha statue. And as if finding a ton of gold wasn't enough, Rojas later found out that the head of the Buddha statue could be removed and that the interior of the statue concealed handfuls of uncut diamonds. After hearing the tale, the dictator who governed the Philippines with an iron hand until 1986, Ferdinand Marcos, is said to have ordered Rojas to be kidnapped and tortured so that he would tell the whereabouts of his treasure so that he could steal it. It has been said that Marcos was successful in retrieving the majority of Yamashita's wealth, but no member of Marcos's family had ever addressed the charges in public until February 1992. Imelda Marcos, the widow of Ferdinand Marcos, is quoted as saying in a 1992 Associated Press article that her late husband had uncovered Japanese treasure after World War II, but had not declared its presence to tax authorities because the sum was so large that it would be embarrassing. It appears that the dictator concealed the gold hoard in a number of different locations, one of which was within the walls of his own residence. Imelda, who is 91 years old today, continues to refuse to divulge any information on the possible storage locations of the remaining gold. During the day, Rogelio Rojas toiled away as a lowly locksmith in the city of Baguio, which is located a few hours north of Manila. Treasure hunting was a hobby of his that he pursued in his leisure time. In the decades that followed World War II, it was a popular sport that at one point came dangerously close to becoming a national obsession in a country where Japanese soldiers were accused of robbing and hiding huge sums of gold and other treasures during their control of the Philippines. During this period, the Philippines was under Japanese occupation. It is said that General Tomoyuki Yamashita and his soldiers hid tons of gold and other looted riches in underground caverns and tunnels in the northern part of the country, with the aim of recovering all of it after the war. 
This is the basis for a local legend. However, Japan did finally surrender, and after being captured by U.S. forces, Yamashita was tried for war crimes and sentenced to death. He was put to death in 1946, taking the mystery of the location of the gold heist with him to the grave with him. Years later, when Rogelio Rojas was still a youngster, he encountered a Japanese guy who told him that his father had fought as a soldier under Yamashita and that his father had once drawn him a map indicating the buried riches. The man also informed Rogelio that his father had once given him the map. Another man he encountered had worked as an interpreter for Yamashita, and he claimed that he had once been led to hidden tunnels in Baguio, where he had seen crates of gold and silver, along with a golden statue of Buddha. This man had worked for Yamashita. In 1970, Mr. Rojas, who was 27 years old at the time, organized a team of treasure hunters to unearth the gold and began digging day and night in an abandoned mine shaft below the Baguio Hospital. They were successful in their mission. It took them seven months to break into a network of underground tunnels where they discovered a human skeleton dressed in a Japanese army uniform along with bayonets, rifles, and other weapons. They found one tunnel that was approximately 1.8 meters high and 9 meters long that was entirely stuffed with crates. When Mr. Rojas opened the first box, he discovered 24 individual gold bars. After that, Mr. Rojas discovered a Buddha statue that was golden in color and stood around 90 centimeters tall in a concrete vault that was located beneath the floor of the tunnel. According to his calculations, it had to weigh at least one ton. It took 10 people to transport the statue and the gold bars to Mr. Rojas's house when he discovered that the head of the Buddha could be detached. From within, he extracted handfuls of rough diamonds and put them on display. Mr. Rojas began the process of selling the golden Buddha as well as some of the gold bars before he could go back into the tunnels and acquire the rest of the hidden treasure. He talked with three possible purchasers. They all agreed that the statue was made of 22 karat gold after one of them had it appraised. Another buyer, Joe Oihara, came to an agreement with Mr. Rojas to place a deposit on the gold statue equal to 1 million pesos, which would be around $2 million in 2022 currency. But a crew of eight armed thugs dressed in military clothes showed up a few days later. They were there. Without having first obtained a valid search warrant, the men broke into the home of the Rojas family and stole everything within, including the gold Buddha, the diamonds, the 17 remaining gold bars, the samurai swords, and the coin collection. Even the piggy bank that the Rojas children kept their savings in was taken, and members of the family were tortured. It found out that Oihara had been staying at the home of Josefa Marcos, the mother of Ferdinand Marcos, the tyrant who proclaimed martial law the next year in the Philippines. Marcos was the president of the Philippines at the time. After hearing about the gold from Oihara, Marcos himself issued the order to conduct the search and seizure operation at Rojas's residence. Judge Pio Marcos, the president's uncle, and the one who had previously granted Mr. Rojas a permit to dig for the wealth, forewarned him that he was now in danger and that he was likely to be killed because of it. The Rojas family, led by Mr. Rojas, left the town and went into hiding. Interesting, right? Well, subscribe now for more of these thrilling stories and turn on post notification to know when there is a next post. However, a few months later, he was apprehended and taken into custody. He was also subjected to cigarette burns, electric shocks, and electric shocks while he was being tortured. Mr. Rojas was warned that he would never see his family again if he did not sign an affidavit clearing President Marcos of any responsibility in the theft of the Golden Buddha. He was also threatened with death if he did not sign the document. He was coerced into signing a different affidavit in which he denied ever reporting a theft having occurred in his residence. The locksmith was eventually let free, but when he arrived at the political rally where he was scheduled to speak, hand grenades were tossed onto the stage where he was supposed to be sitting. A number of people were murdered or severely injured in the incident. Mr. Rojas went into hiding for an additional year, but when he tried to return to his house in Baguio for the second time, he was apprehended and sentenced to two years in prison for illegal possession of a pistol. Research team finally discovers tunnel that leads to treasure. Click on the next video now to find out what they found in the tunnel.